Your Grace, Mayor of London, my lords, brothers and sisters. I say brothers and sisters because Psalm 133 commences with that beautiful verse, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And this, I believe, is the theme of this significant event. We are brothers and sisters belonging to different faith groups, and we've come together in a spirit of great unity. At the outset, I would like to thank our hosts and hostess, Archbishop of Canterbury and Mrs. Welby, for their gracious hospitality. The Archbishop has set as one of his prime priorities interfaith dialogue and understanding. There are so many outstanding initiatives that he drives forward, so many events that he hosts here at Lambeth, and tonight's event is but one of many of them, and for me it is a privilege to work alongside him as we aspire together to achieve these noble and sacred goals of human cooperation and partnership within our society. Harris, thank you very much for your warm words of introduction. I got to know Harris Bukhari and through him, the NAS Legacy Foundation, just over three years ago, when at Harris's suggestion, we staged a very significant event at the Finchley Synagogue, and it was then that I got to know Harris as somebody who comes up with some great ideas, and with his sheer determination, once he has the idea, he will see it through to its fruitful and successful conclusion. And it's for that reason that we're here this evening. Uh, thank you, Harris, for the inspiration that you give and all that which the NAS Legacy Foundation gives within our society. In our verse from the Psalms, we say that when brothers and sisters come together as one, it is good and it is pleasant, and both terms are necessary. Sometimes you can have something which is good, but it's distinctly unpleasant, such as, for example, the taking of some medicines. On the other hand, sometimes you can have something which is very pleasant, but it's really not good, and we shouldn't be engaging in it. But when people come together, even while they might have differences of outlook, coming from divergent groups, from different faiths, highlighting what they have in common, then such a gathering is both good and it is pleasant. We're indebted to our host and hostess for the pleasant surroundings, and we are fired with anticipation with regard to the food and drink which I know will follow. And also, we want the world to know that an event such as this is good. In fact, it's very good. We want it to be noticed and we want the messages to be internalized. I'm simply in awe of our Muslim brethren who include within such a central aspect of their faith an iftar which can bring people together within groups and within communities and which is open to be shared by those who are not part of the faith of Islam. And as a result, we can have such an evening which highlights at one and the same time both the particular and the universal. And I'm finding each year that I'm going to more and more iftars. In fact, within our diary in the office of the chief rabbi, Ramadan now is a very busy month. And it's simply wonderful that we have these opportunities to come together in order to highlight what we share and hopefully to build upon it. I feel a bit guilty that I've been eating and drinking today while our Muslim brethren have been fasting as they do throughout Ramadan. It is through the abstinence from food and drink that we come to appreciate food all the more. Indeed, when you lack something, you come to appreciate it more. And sometimes when you have something and you know that you could lose it or one day you will lose it, then you will treasure it all the more. It's in this context that we can understand some of the ways of the Almighty. 
because people often ask faith leaders, how is it possible that a benevolent God can allow there to be a world within? There are so many challenges, such an enormous amount of suffering. But one thing's for sure. If there is the potential for illness, then we will appreciate our good health all the more. If it is possible for there to be conflict, then we will appreciate peace and tranquility. And because there is the potential for death, we treasure life. And similarly, when it comes to food, in the absence of food, we appreciate it. And so too with regard to an iftar of this nature. We appreciate it because within our society, tragically, there is such a deep absence of true and outright tolerance and harmony between different elements within our society. And I therefore lament the fact that tonight's event is a special one. It is a special one, but I lament the fact that it needs to be. Because actually, this should be the norm and not the exception. Since becoming mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, from the very first moment, has let us as Londoners know that he is the mayor of and for all Londoners. And he has in his vision transforming London into a place through which gatherings of this kind will become the norm and not the exception. Mayor, we want to congratulate you on your initial days and weeks in office. You are a truly outstanding symbol of all that which is dear to us, which we share through our aspirations to create a harmonious, just, wonderful, peaceful, and harmonious society. And thank you very much for joining us this evening in this significant event. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being part of this iftar. And hopefully, the word indeed will get out from this and similar events when we, as brothers and sisters from different faiths, come together in a spirit of unity. It is good and it is pleasant. Thank you very much. Thank you.